measurements that we're going to talk about. So when I'm measuring the distance from the extensor process to the top of the barium paste, we call that the coronary extensor distance. So that'll increase really slowly over time if you have a chronic laminitis horse. And we're going to, I'm going to show you why that number increases slowly with the chronic case. It'll increase rapidly if you have an acute case where you have acute collapse within the hoof capsule or a, a distal displacement scene. The HL zone, so that's partially horn, partially lamellae, is another distance we're going to talk about. We're going to mention our sole depth again, and I'm going to show you on the venogram why that's important. And then we're just going to talk a little bit about treatment. And when I'm talking about treatment, we're going to talk about the palmar angle, or the PA. And what that is is what Madison and I have been talking about. It's the angle of the palmar surface of the coffin bone in relationship to the shoe or to the ground, because we'll measure that in two different ways. And you can see on this mare how both of her wings are superimposed. So this mare does not have a medial lift. A lot of horses will have a lower medial wing than a lateral wing. And you don't see that on this image. And then because we're at the Minray booth, we're going to point out when you're taking these x-rays for your barriers, you want to make sure you have a machine with a high mass so that you can get all the soft tissue detail for your barriers so that the barrier can actually see the cup and the sole. And you can see the horn. If you had a white line horse, you could see the dark radial lucency from the white line disease. You want to make sure you have all of that detail on your x-rays just so that gives him more information when he's working on. This is a foot where we just, again, and you guys should always be doing this at home. You need a crock pot so you can see what's gone wrong with your cases. This is a foot where we've just popped the coffin bone and the soft tissue, the dermis, out of the capsule. These are the characteristics that we're going to look at. This is a normal foot. So one thing we can see is the coronary band has little bitty pinpoint holes. Those are the papillae where the blood supply from the dermis goes into each tubule and then that's how you get your actual horn growth down the hoof wall. You can also see that you've got the same little papillae in the sole. So underneath the coffin bone, the dermis also has papillae and they give the blood supply to the sole and that's where you get the sole growth. The lamellae, the coffin bone has the dermal or the soft tissue lamellae. The horn has the epidermal or the heart tissue lamellae and they interdigitate like this. And so when the horse has laminitis, those lamellae will actually increase in size on the dermal side. So Dr. Pollitt's got really nice pictures. You can look them up on his website and you can see how the tips actually elongate and you get little extra islands of tips of the lamellae when it's trying to heal. So this horse, the thing we're looking at is the tubular horn is growing straight down. We have about seven millimeters of dermal lamellae and seven and a half millimeters of horn lamellae. And that's where, when we're measuring, we'll look at these cases and you're gonna have about a 15 millimeter or 16 millimeter HL zone on your normal horses if you have a thoroughbred, two-year-old quarter horse, paint horse, that kind of thing. The Australian thoroughbreds, they generally have a little bit of a heavier hoof wall. Some of the warm bloods have a heavier hoof wall. And that's why a lot of people will go in and take baseline radiographs at least once a year, especially if you have a horse that you think might be insulin resistant. You need to know what your HL zone is normal for that horse. So this is our normal. This is a horse that's had laminitis. We can tell that this horse has had laminitis for about one month because what we can see is, is that our hoof tubule is no longer growing parallel to the horn of the wall. So you can see these lines, how they grow straight, perpendicular, and then here's our old horn that grows downward. So this horse has had for one month, you can see that we've got a really large increase in our lamellae. You can see where we've got kind of a rim. The dermal cushion underneath the coffin bone was missing on this foot, which I just don't have it in the same picture. So there's quite a bit of changes in this hoof capsule. And this is just a month in from the initial insult. Also, when you look, remember the other one, we can see those really nice little pinpoint papillae on the coronary band. You just kind of lose that appearance here, and you don't really see that in the sole. So this foot was really in trouble, which is obviously why it ended up at the diagnostic lab, and we got to save that foot back for us. The problem is, and that's why we're going to talk about venograms, is you can get this over a month, but we want to recognize that we've got a problem before all of this happens. So this horse has had a big injury and it's actually had collapse of the coffin bone within the hoof capsule to get these changes. And I'm going to show you something and it'll just kind of trigger you that you have a big problem before you actually get capsular collapse. If you start to try to treat this horse, it's much more difficult than if we would have treated the horse back when it had the original hoof capsule that we looked at at the previous screen. When I'm looking with our radiographs, sometimes we're going to look at the soft tissue changes. 
The other thing that I really look at, because everybody wants to know prognosis, is what your bone changes are. So you can see this is a normal coffin bone. It's a very upright coffin bone. This is not a negative PA foot like we were talking about. It's, it's probably a club-footed coffin bone. This is a coffin bone from a horse that's had chronic laminitis. Obviously, it's very chronic laminitis. So you can see that the bone actually has quite a bit of changes. We've got a paper that's been buried over at EVE, but we've got a lot of MR findings. So you have bone edema. You have a lot of different things that are happening within the coffin bone that we just haven't quite been aware of yet. And so you can end up with that frothy bone, but you also end up having lysis. So when you look at this bone, this is actually about all that's left of that original coffin bone, if this had been the same coffin bone. So you can, over time, actually have bone loss. This is my hallmark. When this is a coffin bone that's just been cut in half, so you can see the terminal arch where the blood supply goes through the coffin bone. If I have a coffin bone where it's eroded back to the terminal arch, that horse has always got chronic bone pain. It's always lame. I don't care how you shoe it. It's going to be a little bit lame. And they have chronic recurrent foot abscesses. And the reason why is because your bone's eroded back into the blood supply, like it had here on this coffin bone. The other thing to think about is when you're taking these lateral radiographs, we're looking across the foot, across the coffin bone, but the coffin bone's not going to be symmetrical. You're going to actually have a lot more bone damage, usually on that medial side. So when you're trying to judge if you're back to the terminal arch, you better do a few of those 65 DP views that we talked about too every once in a while. See how asymmetric your coffin bone is. So that's something to think about when you're doing that rule of thumb.